Welcome viewers once again to TV Box Stop, the channel for the best reviews in TV boxes, mini PCs and accessories. On today's video, I bring to you my review of the Mealy Quieter 3C fanless mini PC. This hand size compact mini PC runs on 8GB of LPDDR4 RAM, 256GB of internal storage with Wi-Fi 6 technology, Bluetooth 5.2, M.2 expandable storage on the latest Windows 11 operating system. So to find out all there is to know about its CPU performance, its surround sound audio capabilities and how it runs on alternative operating systems, stick around, my full review is up next. So welcome back. So in the box you have the unit itself. A 12 volts 2 amps power adapter, a bracket and screws for mounting to the back of your monitor, plug pin types depending on your region, a heat pad, and a user guide. As mentioned a while ago, it has a very compact design measuring 5.2 inches wide by 3.2 inches long by 0.7 inches thick. Most of its outer shell is made of plastic with a heatsink warning that indicates its surface may get warm during operation. There is also some Intel stickers to the side here. For input output, I'm surprised that they managed to provide so many connecting peripherals in this compact layout. It has one HDMI 2.0 port, one mini display output port, one RJ45 Ethernet Gigabit LAN port, one USB Type-C display port, a headphone jack, a micro SD card slot, a reset button, and its 12 volts 2 amps DC power socket to its rear. To its right, it has three USB 3.0 ports, and to its left, it has a Kensington lock. At the front, it has an LED power button, and to its base, it has a metal heating plate with two anti skid rubber pads, screw holes for mounting to the back of your monitor with the included bracket, and four screws that you can remove to gain access to its heatsink and its 2280 M.2 SSD card slot. So when you start up this mini PC, you will have to complete the Windows 11 full startup wizard and once completed, you would have a fully activated operating system. So here I've already completed the wizard and logged into my Microsoft account and installed all the apps needed for this review. And to get started, let's first look at its basic system information. So here it shows that the processor is the Intel Celeron N5105, which is a quad-core CPU clocked at 2.0 GHz, but it has a boost speed of 2.8 GHz as I'll show you in a moment. It comes with 8 GB of RAM and is a 64-bit operating system. And if you scroll down under product keys and activation, it shows that your operating system is activated. So for a bit more in-depth information, the Ader 64 Extreme app shows that it's a Jasper Lake CPU and it has a boost clock speed of 2.9 GHz, but it's actually 2.87 GHz. It has 8 GB of onboard LPDDR4X RAM with a maximum clock speed of 29.33 MHz. Its GPU is the Intel UHD graphics with a base clock speed of 450 MHz and a boost clock speed of 800 MHz with OpenGL version 4.5 with 4K 60Hz display with HDR. Its audio adapter is the Intel Jasper Lake HDMI that produces audio, voice and speech capabilities. Its internal storage is a generic 256GB A3A444 model and below here you can see the Samsung 980 256GB M.2 SSD installed. Its Wi-Fi adapter is the dual band AX201 Wi-Fi 6 AX adapter and it has Bluetooth support which is version 5.2 and that's its system and hardware information. So with this operating system and hardware, you get features such as 4K 2160p at 60Hz resolution with HDR, screen notation to portrait mode, reverse portrait and reverse landscape. You get three-way monitor display via its HDMI port, its mini display port and its USB Type-C display port. For entertainment, it's not that great at playing 4K videos as it buffers a lot, but it plays 1080p videos in HDR quite okay. For 
for watching YouTube, it can play as high as 4K 2160p resolution, but it freezes a lot and it plays best at 1080p. For video editing, I installed Camtasia and loaded a 4K video onto its timeline. When set to edit in 4K, the timeline freezes a lot, and when set to 1080p, it barely edits the video. So I would say that this mini PC is not recommended for video editing. For surround sound audio, when connected to a receiver under speaker configuration, the option to select 7.1 Dolby Atmos and DTSX then becomes available. So I'll now test which surround sound audio formats it can produce. So firstly, here it outputs Dolby Atmos. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels. <laughs> From this said video, you can also get Dolby Digital Plus when your receiver speaker configuration is set to front surround. Whoa. Next, it produces DTS HD Master Audio. With this video, it produces Dolby Surround. With this video, when set to multi-speaker configuration, you get Dolby Surround, and with front speaker configuration, you get Dolby True HD. Over here is the right channel. And with my final video, it produces DTSX, so when connected to your receiver, it produces all surround sound audio formats such as Dolby Atmos, Dolby Surround, Dolby True HD, Dolby Digital Plus, DTS HD Master Audio, and DTSX. So with surround sound audio, you can connect this mini PC to your smart TV and set its display to HD 1080p or 4K 2160p at 60Hz with HDR and watch paid subscription services such as Netflix, Prime Video, Disney Plus and HBO Max in HD and 4K Ultra HD resolution with Dolby Atmos. It also has HDCP protection. For gaming, it's ill-advised to attempt any high graphics CPU-intensive 3D gaming as it's not powerful enough to render big name titles, however, it does pretty well with low graphics games. So let's now take a look at some benchmarks under Windows. First is RAM and internal storage. It has a RAM copy speed of 13,068 MB per second. Its internal storage has a read speed of 238 MB per second and a write speed of 209 MB per second. Next, the results of the speed test performed on its Wi-Fi 6 bands and its Gigabit Ethernet LAN port. Based on my network of 154 megabits per second, these two tests right here are the results of its 5 GHz band and it achieved maximum speed of my network. These two right here are of its 2.4 GHz band and it could only reach as high as 100 megabits per second which is 64% of my network. These two tests right here are of its gigabit Ethernet LAN port and it also achieved maximum speed of my network. 
In testing its CPUs, single core and multi core performance, the Geekbench 5 CPU benchmark shows that it has a base clock speed of 2.0 GHz and a boost clock speed of 2.86 GHz. And the results show that it got a single core CPU score of 643 and a multi core score of 1795. In benchmarking its GPU graphics performance, it only qualified for the Time Spy test in the 3 dmark graphics benchmark and it got a score of 331. In the PC version of the Antutu benchmark, it scored 196,251. And finally, in the PC Mark 10 comprehensive benchmark, it scored 2166. And here it shows its web browsing score and its video editing score. So, with these scores entered on my rankings chart, the Melee Quieter C3, surprisingly with its fanless design, is at position 9. Based on its PC Mark 10 benchmark score, this makes it the second best Intel Celeron model on this chart. If you would like to view this chart, see the link in the description below this video. Also, you can use this link right here for the best prices and coupons. So that brings to an end the Windows segment of this review. And just in time for this review, the Bliss OS Android x86 development team released their latest GAPS version based on the Android 12 SDK and I'm happy and quite satisfied to report that this one is their best improvement yet and it's still in development. So using a Samsung 980 256GB M.2 SSD installed into its 2280 M.2 expandable storage facility, I successfully installed the latest version by importing and registering the required EFI keys from the installation disk to bypass the secure boot feature in its BIOS. Without doing this, you cannot install Android x86. For more information and a video tutorial, see the link in the description below this video. So this is the latest Bliss OS Android 12 x86 GAPS version. This means it has full unrestricted access to the Google Play Store and Google Play services. Its launcher has three versions, the Quick Step drag and drop mobile version, a desktop and taskbar version, and a smart docking launcher version. As you can see, it has a navigation bar and full status bar with system controls. This firmware has a unique custom root switch by way of a kernel super user application that allows you to apply custom root access to only the apps you want. The most important improvement is that they have fixed the issue of no audio via HDMI and I'm quite pleased with this latest development. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth work perfectly. You have 4K 2160p at 60Hz resolution, however, you don't get HDR. Under Android x86, you get a CPU clock speed of 2.9 GHz and with the kernel super user application, you can set root access to the kernel auditor software and set its CPU to performance. Its GPU is the Mesa Intel UHD graphics with a GPU clock speed up to 800 MHz with OpenGL version 3.2. Its GPU has Vulkan API version 1.1 support. Its idle operating temperature is around 50 degrees Celsius. It has 4K HDR AV1 video decoders and there are no surround sound audio decoders. I've already tested 4K video playback and surround sound audio using software decoding and the 4K playback and the 1080p playback has issues and there is no surround sound audio hardware or software decoding. Here is its Antutu benchmark score under Android. And here is its gaming and heat management under Android. So if you would like to learn how to install this new version of Android 12 x86, see a link to my video tutorial in the description below this video. Natural 
And finally, I successfully installed the latest version 16 of FireOS and I won't spend much time on it. Because as much as the latest version is beautiful and redesigned to operate more like an Ubuntu desktop interface, it's still using an outdated Android 9 subsystem that cannot be rooted since version 12. So you can still activate the Android subsystem and install open gaps, but you can't achieve root access using the older method. I really like FidoS, but going forward, if they don't provide a way to root the Android subsystem or to update to Android 11, then I would have to look to another similar operating system that can deliver root access to enjoy our favorite apps and games. So in summary, the Melee Quieter 3C is one of the first fanless mini PCs I really like. Even though it's running on an Intel Celeron processor, its performance is really good and I really enjoy its M.2 SATA expandable storage facility that allows me to install any alternative operating system I want and it has the most IO ports for a form factor this size. Even though it has a large heatsink and maintains safe operating temperatures, its surface tends to get hot to the touch so be mindful of that. And that's it. That was my review of the Melee Quieter 3C Fanless Mini PC. If you like it and would like to get your hands on one, you can do so using the link in the description below this video. Thanks for watching. Links in the description are affiliate links, and when used to purchase, they provide support to this channel, which in turn helps me deliver more products for review. So thanks in advance for using my links. Give this video the thumbs up if you enjoyed the presentation. If this is the first time viewing, don't forget to like and subscribe by clicking that subscribe button and ringing that notifications bell to be notified each time I release new videos or decide to do a giveaway. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.